Hello, my name is Karen Sanders and I am an RN and I am the owner and founder of RN Patient Advocacy of North Carolina PLLC and the Holistic RN Patient Advocacy Training Institute. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a favorite topic of mine and that is 16 questions and issues to address while advocating for yourself and your loved one while you're in the hospital. So the first lesson is about pre-hospitalization. The key uh, strategy there is to become an expert on yourself. That means understanding the chronic diseases you have, looking at your medications, your lab work, your vital signs. If you don't understand your disease, you can go to mayoclinic.org and get all kinds of interesting facts and figures about that. So examples of chronic diseases would be diabetes and um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or pneumonia, for example. So the second uh, strategy is to obtain recent copies of your medical records from your primary care provider or from your uh, recent hospitalization. You can get your patient records by paper or by going through a patient portal. So you want to include some physician notes to get help you become familiar with what your physician is diagnosing for you, and you also specialist notes if that would be helpful. And there are different forms that you can do to get those. The, one of the most important strategies is to ask questions of your nursing staff, of physician staff, of dietitians, of respiratory therapists, or pharmacists, or physical therapists. What are you doing? What, what's happening with that? Why am I having that? Does this hurt? How much pain am I going to be in? What's your, what, are, what is your background as my provider? As a nurse, how many years experience have you worked here? And why do you like working here? It's also important to take notes in a journal and pay attention to what's written on the whiteboards. Leave nothing to chance that you can't control. And don't try not to sweat the small stuff, but it's important to stay in touch with every possible question you have. The third strategy is to consider having a patient advocate with you during your hospitalization. Although in COVID times, we might not be allowed to attend to the bedside of, of patients that are hospitalized, but we can do telephone calls, we can do conference calls to help the patient understand what's happening to them. And um, people that could be considered as your advocate it could be a spouse, a family member, a friend, it could um, be very important that they have some kind of healthcare literacy, that they understand medical terminology, and also healthcare education. Do they have an associate's degree, a baccalaureate degree, a master's degree? And it would be helpful if it was in one of the healthcare professions. And have they worked in this region recently? And one of my favorite sayings by Winston Churchill is never, never, never give up on your own healthcare. Don't, don't be overwhelmed by so many different strategies and things that are going on with you, but just continue to plot along and continue asking questions and don't give up. Um, one of the key strategies is to be kind and considerate and patient with your healthcare staff, nursing staff, medical staff, pharmacy staff, medical record staff, physical therapy staff are all overwhelmed with the extreme numbers of volumes of patients coming into the hospital and the extreme criticality of their diagnoses if they have COVID, how sick are they, not only COVID but lots of other critically ill patients coming into the hospital that are unstable and it really doesn't help the nursing staff for you to be grouchy or difficult or demanding when they are possibly short-staffed and doing the best, the best thing they can for you. So be kind and considerate to your caregivers. Um, on admission day to the hospital, strategy number six is to make sure that your registration information is current. Add your family members, your family members or friends that you want to have access to your own medical records. Make sure that they have the cell phones of your family members and friends and make sure that your friends and family know that they have been added so that Caregivers from the hospital can contact you when your patient or your loved one's in the hospital. Strategy number seven, um, the press the hospital bed call button located in the side rails of your bed or 
there's something called a pillow speaker which is a little device that you can also access patient channels on the hospital's TV network. So don't be afraid to press the, the, the nurse call light, especially if you have alarms going off in your room. Maybe you have an infusion device alarm, or maybe you have a heart rate alarm or an out of bed alarm, but understand how, what those alarms are, and especially understand how to get in touch with your nurse at all times. The next one is number eight. What strategy, what do you do to call for help? And so that means, suppose you have a question about what kind of device was inserted into your hip for your broken hip to stabilize that bone, and you would like to know what that's about. So it's important to first start with your primary nurse assigned to you, and one of the strategies is for any questions related to your care, ask the nurse to roll into your room the uh, computer on wheels so he or she can use their password to access your record and it's it's very um, wonderful to have them read your physician's progress notes for today or the day before or the day before or to ask for specialist progress notes to understand what kinds of things are going on with you and if you're not getting help then it's important uh, if you're not getting your nurse to come in the room then you can ask to speak to the charge nurse there's one charge nurse assigned to every shift and then if it's a bigger complaint you can ask to speak to the nurse manager you can also ask to speak for the hospital administrator on call or the nursing supervisor by calling the hospital operator directly for very difficult issues regarding discharge what's going to happen to you when you go home are you going to go home from the hospital to a facility then we can also recommend to patients and families, this is number nine, to have a patient care conference with your primary care physician, with your primary nurse and a case manager. And that is a very helpful, helpful strategy to clear up any confusion about the steps that need to be taken to get you transferred or your loved one to home, to a home health facility or to assisted living or skilled facility or even independent living or for outpatient wound therapy or for whatever. And when all those people are on the phone with you, with your physician, with your nurse, with your case manager, there's less misunderstanding and less probability of errors. The next um, category or strategy is number 10, utilize your iPhone or your phone or computer for healthcare information while you're in the, while you're in the hospital. So. If you have an iPhone or a digital phone or a computer, you can go to mayoclinic.org or any other uh, set of uh, wonderful websites to find out what is diabetes, what is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, what is an A1C lab value, for example. Those are all information pieces and portals that you can get information about. There's, in many hospitals, number 11, strategy 11, is how to call a rapid response. So um, you, these numbers are usually posted in the room for immediate groups of people to come to your room and address any emergent issues. For example, you might be having a fast heart rate, you might be having chest pain, or a family might be having chest pain, so you want to get a group of people in there fast who are healthcare providers, nurses, who are expert in their fields and working with you to help figure out what's going on. Number 12, what are these alar alarms and why are they ringing? We have an abundance of different alarms going on in patient rooms while they're in the hospital. It could be a heart rate monitor. It could be a blood pressure monitor. It could be an out of bed alarm. It could be uh, an infusion device alarm where it might be occluded or maybe you it's in the crook of your arm and you bent your arm and the alarm goes off it's sensing an occlusion or maybe there's the the amount of drug and a fluid has finished infusing so it's important to understand what those alarms are um, number 13 ask for an rn to access your medical record and read your daily physician notes we've already talked about that ask what are abnormal things going on with you that could be abnormal lab work it could be abnormal um, procedures it could be 
reading about your own diagnoses, and it could also be reading about your medications. What are several things that you should take to the hospital to help your stay be comfortable and, and, and loving for yourself? So there's a whole list of things, and that's strategy number 14. So take extra markers to mark on the in-room whiteboard, take pens and a journal for you, bring your laptop with several extension cords, not only for your laptop, but your smartphone, bring hand sanitizer, Clorox wipes to wipe off the top of your bedside commode, sweeteners, salt and pepper, creamer, don't take cash or any valuables and leave them inside your drawers. Um, soap and washcloths are really helpful. Snacks, eating utensils, a copy of your DNR or your most form, a list of your own meds, a list of the, your uh, emergency contact numbers and the hospital operator number and ask questions about everything you desire and bring some paper towels. Number 16, it's very important to keep a diary every day electronically with pictures and handwritten notes or uh, text messages to yourself to identify and keep up with all the things that came in to your room. Who were they? Who were the healthcare professionals taking care of you? What were their names? What did they tell you? Uh, who's, uh, what's being written on your whiteboard? And uh, are your meals okay? Are they bringing you the correct meals? Are they having any trouble administering medications? Those are the kinds of things you'd like to keep a diary for. So in summary, there's about 16 major strategies that we would like you to consider when you or a loved one's gonna be in the hospital. And just remember, never, never, never give up, according to Winston Churchill, and never, never, never give up on your health care. This is Karen Sanders. It's my pleasure to speak to you today. Thanks.